On to the Super Screen TV News at 6. I am Kiruka Ibe and still looking at trending stories. President Mohamed Dubari has withheld assent to five bills passed by the National Assembly over issues bordering on draft inconsistency and conflict with the Constitution. The President expresses reservations in a letter to the National Assembly which was read by the Deputy President of the Senate, E.K. Ikwiri Madu, who presided over the plenary. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on 4 January 2018 to decline presidential assent to the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission Amendment Bill 2018, recently passed by the National Assembly. I'm declining assent to the bill for the following reasons. A. The bill will interfere with the and obstruct the smooth administration of revenue generating agencies of the federal government. B, the bill will confer the powers of oversight of the revenue currently vested in the President and Minister of Finance to the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission and negate the existing provision of Section 51 of the Federal Inland Revenue Services. C, the proposed insertion in Section 6A of the bill with regards to the removal of heads of revenue generating agencies needs to be harmonized with the various establishing, establishment acts of these agencies, which contain specific terms and procedures for the removals of chief executive officers. Please accept, distinguished senior president, the assurance of my highest consideration. Signed, Muhammad Buhari, President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Five bills President Muhammad Dubari retailed assent to a revenue mobilization allocation and physical amendment bill, bankruptcy and insolvency amendment bill, Federal Polytechnic Amendment Bill, Maritime Security Operations Coordination Bill, and the Energy Commission Amendment Bill. And in the same vein, the Senate confirmed the appointment of Monde Udo Tom from Aquaibom State as Residence Electoral Commissioner. The confirmation followed the consideration of a report submitted by the Chairman Senate Committee on INEX, Suleiman Naziv. With the Senate confirmed the nomination of Ed Amon De Udo Drum for appointment as President Electoral Commissioner for the Independent National Electoral Commission. Those in say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. The nomination of Ed Amon De Udo Drum is now by confirmed as President Electoral Commissioner for the Independent National Electoral Commission. They believe to represent a white bomb state. All right. Well, I'd like to congratulate him, and uh, I think we've finally closed this chapter. And now the Independent Electoral Commission is fully constituted with all the states contributing resident electoral commissioner, and I believe that's what the law intended. And uh, if there are any doubts regarding his neutrality or independence, so this is an opportunity for him to deal with it. And I believe that his entrance into the uh, electoral commission at this point is crucial as we approach uh, the 2019 election. So every hand must be on deck. All the um, commissioners must do their bit to ensure that will have a credible election for which all of us will be proud of and the international community will approve. So I just want to appeal for neutrality in the part of the International Electoral Commission and for their independence to be also respected. Appointment of Chidi Kennedy Izua as the Director General of Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission. And due to the absence of the Chairman Senate Committee on Diaspora and Non-Governmental Organizations, Rose Oko, the Senate stepped down the confirmation of the appointment of Abike Dabiri Erewa as Chairman Chief Executive Officer of Nigeria Diaspora Commission for another legislative day. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubaka, says President Muhammad Dubari is fighting the opposition and not corruption. Atiku, who disclosed this in a statement by his media advisor, Paul Ibe, said it is shocking that President Buhari had not condemned the action of the Kano State Governor, Uma Ganduje, for allegedly taking bribe from a contractor. You recall that President Buhari, who spoke at a town hall meeting on the allegations against Ganduje and a former secretary to the government of the Federation, Babake Lawal, said the state assembly is investigating and they have also gone to court. 
and a nine-man disciplinary committee of the Imo State All Progressives Congress, APC, has recommended that Governor Rocha Sukorocha be expelled from the party for engaging in anti-party activities. A letter issued by the disciplinary committee and signed by its chairman Matthew Omehara and Secretary Kevin Ubu states that Governor Okorocha failed to appear before the committee to answer questions on the petitions leveled against him and did not put in writing any reasons for his absence. According to the committee, the governor's action contravened a section of the party's constitution citing Article 21 punishable under Article 21D. And the Christian Association of Nigeria Khan and the Muslim community in River State have endorsed Governor Ben Ayade for the March 2, 2019 governorship election in the state. Khan said its decision is based on the governor's giant strides in the areas of industrialization, infrastructural development and human capacity development. The associations also made the cash donation of 1.2 million naira to the governor to assist his campaign. The endorsement came during an interface between the governor and the Christian body health at the main ball of the cultural center, Calabar. In his response, Governor Ben Ayade expressed his gratitude to the interfaith body and for finding him worthy of their endorsement. And Kaduna State Governor Nasir Erufai has charged the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN Wata Onoge, to resign from office. Erufai, who gave the charge while fought in the claims that the CJN forgot to declare his assets, said the CJN should step down from office. The governor also said all the arguments being made that the allegations against the CJN should first go to the National Judicial Council, NJC, are wrong, adding that all the court orders and lawyers are not helping the judiciary or the legal practice in the country. And Minister of Education Adamu Adamu has pleaded with Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, to be patient with the government, saying the issues that led to the strike will soon be addressed. The minister who disclosed this inquiry state said the federal government is making efforts to address the demands of the various unions. The minister also said peace and tranquility are the fertilizers that would keep the seed of development growing, stressing the peaceful coexistence is very important in the educational institutions for effective learning. And the resident of Elizabeth Opara, a widow who lives with her son in Ikorodu, has been opened by the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency, LASEPA. Super screen Solamide Omoka, who has been following the story from when the widow's poetry and residence have been put on the lock and key by La Sepa, gives us more details and updates in the story. Let's take a look. Remember the case of one Elizabeth Opara, a widow who operates a poetry in her residence, which was sealed by the Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency, La Sepa, on November 27, 2018, after complaints by her neighbors in Okorudu. According to Elizabeth, the house was sealed while she went out to get medicine for her sick son, who was coincidentally locked inside. However, on January 15, 2019, the magistrate court ordered the opening of a house, saying it is totally wrong to lock an individual out of a house for a long period of time. So there was a reason, because uh, something is very, very important is at stake. Now I have to open it. And then I explain to you that this is the reason why we opened this thing. You now said you now lock these children for a good three days. You lock them at uh, Oshodi. I was telling you, something overrides something. If life and um, order is, uh, uh, is uh, the two things are facing you, you choose if, uh, the most important one. You save, save life first. Elizabeth and her son further urged government and the court to serve justice on the matter. La Sepa is saying that the poetry will remain closed till the matter uh, is concluded and that they, they are also saying that we are going to pay a fine for breaking the seal. They are not saying anything as to the damages that we have incurred. We have incurred a lot of damages as you, as you can see. Almost all the beds are dead. Our rights have been infringed upon. Our man has been denied. Uh, her house for almost three months. These are unfair treatment on the part of Nasepa. We want to be compensated for the damages we have been, we have incurred. Um, this is unfair if 
La Sepa will tell us to take the whole thing the way it is. And even asking us to pay a fine, it will be very, very unfair. That is not justice. If that is allowed to, to happen, then there is no true justice. I feel a, bit, a little bit relieved. Because for almost three months, since 27th of November, my house has been locked. I am a refugee in my own house since 24th, 27th of November, up to now, up to yesterday, January 15th. My house was under lock and key. It's very unfair, but now I feel a little bit relieved. I'm expecting justice, true justice, true justice I'm expecting. When Super Screen News crew visited the compound, it was an unfortunate scene as several birds were seen dead, with just a handful still barely surviving, after being locked without the feed for over two months. What you have note is that the poultry... An expert in Nigeria's music industry have harped on the need to appreciate African art music. They made this disclosure at an event organized in Lagos to celebrate Africa's foremost composer, Professor Akin Yuba. Super Screen's Precious Amayu now tells us more. It is often said that of the three African music genres, which include traditional music, popular music, and African art music, art music is the least prominent. Art music is simply the African variation of Western classical music. Speaking at an international symposium to celebrate the life of foremost African music composer, Professor Akin Yuba, Lagos State Commissioner for Tourism, Art and Culture, Steve Ayorindi, shower encomium on Akin Yuba, calling on ministries of tourism across the country to use African art music as a revenue generation stream. So Yuba um, can be described as one of the fathers of um, contemporary classical African music. Uh, he actually propagated the idea of uh, African pianism. If you listen to any of the compositions of Professor Yuba, you will see uh, the concept of African pianism, which he propagated in it. It's deep, it's uh, colorful, it's thoughtful, um, it, it, is, it is intellectual, and it projects everything African. Uh, by bringing uh, those who are into that field on board, you know, not necessarily uh, um, as workers or anything like that, but to bring them on board, involve them, engage them, and let them be part of uh, the develop developmental processes that uh, either the Ministry of uh, Tourism, Arts and Culture, you know, or the Departments of Culture, or the National Troop, anybody like that, you know, uh, um, is doing. Uh, there is a role for them to play in performances, in education, in projecting the image of the country because they are rooted in the true value and the true culture of what African music and African culture constitute. Convener of the symposium, Professor Bode Omojola, as well as other African art music composers, also applaud the contributions of Akin Yuba to Africanist music, insisting that African art music should be included as a compulsory subject in primary and secondary school levels. He is known globally for his work promoting African art music which is um, like an, uh, an African version of classical music. And he coined a number of terminologies, for example, African pianism, creative musicology, uh, in his bid to explain how African composers could write works that may borrow from Western classical music, but are culturally relevant uh, to the African uh, environment. Art music. It's, it's not functional. You don't appreciate it because of its utilitarian value. You appreciate it because of course only its aesthetic value. We just need to build up audiences to go back to our lower levels of education. How much attention do our ministries of education and culture pay to music? Because you have to begin early if you want somebody to know how to play a particular instrument or how to sing some songs, you have to train. So there are several factors that we need to address. which is in honor of Professor Akin Yuba, is to laud the achievements of a man who has mentored many scholars and musicians within and outside Africa, and whose works are invaluable academic and creative resources for students, scholars, and composers across all genres of music. 
And here we take a short break and when we return, we give you business stories. Stay with us. You welcome back and thank you for staying with us. You're still watching Super Screen TV News at 6 and now talking business. The Nigeria Stock Exchange in its new report says in foreign investors pulled out a total of 642.65 billion naira from the nation's stock market last year compared to the 435.1 withdrawal in 2017. Chief Executive Officer NCE Os Oscar Oyema, who made the disclosure at the 2018 market recap, said the rise in foreign outflows highlights attenuated foreign participation due to a shift to higher yielding assets with lower risk in developed countries, coupled with the impending political risk in the coming elections. He also said foreign portfolio investment overflow includes sales transactions or liquidation of portfolio investment through the stock market, while the FP I inflow includes purchase transactions on the NCE equities only. And the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, say, has identified technological change and security concerns as part of challenges militating against the sources of financial inclusions in Nigeria. CBN Governor Godwin Amefele, who was represented by the Deputy Governor of Financial System Stability, Aisha Ahmed, at the National Financial Literacy Stakeholders Conference held in Abuja, observed that these challenges have resulted in the financial inclusions of about 38% adults in Nigeria. I know that your input and ideas shall shape our policy formulation and implementation in these key areas. Building inclusive systems has become, financial systems, has become an important objective for policymakers around the world, given the positive effects that financial inclusion has on poverty reduction and enhancing our economic prosperity. And that was why in 2012, we launched the National Financial Inclusion Strategy, which has been mentioned by some of the speakers that came up here before me, and we gave ourselves a target of 20% exclusion rates by 2020. The latest EFINA report puts us as about 36.8% of eligible adults who do not have access to financial services. This is down from 41.6% that we recorded in 2016. Today, the financial system is actually the most affected by the technological change that we see going on across sectors. In 2017, the banking industry had 1.4 billion Naira in electronic transactions. 1.4 billion electronic transactions valued at 94.97.4 trillion. The Apex Bank Boss, however, advocated the strengthening of collaborations between it and sister agencies to successfully implement the national financial inclusion policy to the benefit of the UN banked populace. And managing director of the transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, Usman Mohammed, says under its transmission rehabilitation and expansion program, the company has raised over 1.624 billion US dollars to boost power supply in the country. Mohammed, who made the disclosure during the official commissioning of a 60 MVA transformer in Kano, said part of the amount is 486 million US dollars from the World Bank which is targeting existing substations and existing lines across the country aimed at achieving what he called N1 redundancy criteria. He also said under the program Kano and its environs will receive one 300 MVA transformer at Kumboto substation and one hundred MVA transformer at Dakata and Dan Gundi substations each. The federal government says up to 5 million new jobs will be created in a fresh 1.1 billion US dollars agricultural loan project with the Brazilian government. The loan, which is sourced under a Nigerian Brazil bilateral project, Green Imperative, was launched at the presidential villa by Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. 
Speaking at the launch of the project, Oshibajo said it is part of the government's promise to invest in agriculture, adding that the facilitating aspect of the deal was the emphasis on merchandise agriculture, which is said would lead to higher yields. The partnership involves the provision of modern agricultural machinery and support services, including 10,000 tractors to be assembled locally in Nigeria and the establishment of over 707 training centers for Nigerians. And here we take another short break and when we return, we give you foreign and sports stories. Stay with us. Welcome back and thank you for joining us once again and now on the foreign scene Zimbabwe precisely. White groups say security forces have responded to demonstrators in Zimbabwe with unprecedented use of excessive force, warning that crisis in the country could engulf the whole region if it is not properly checked. According to Human Rights Watch, supporters of the ruling ZANU-PF party are beating people and handing them over to police, adding that troops are also allegedly invading people's homes. We thought we had a new, a new country and a new way of doing things. Mm -hmm. None of what I'm being accused of is what I have done at all. We are calling on the authorities in Zimbabwe to fully restore access to internet. It is a human right, it is a constitutional right. You will recall that citizens are protesting hiking fuel prices after the government increased the price by 100%, a move they say will help improve the, or normalize the country's failing economy. And now looking at the latest updates from the Bogota car bomb attack. Colombian security officials say the death toll from the Bogota Police Academy car explosion has risen to 21 with dozen orders injured. The government has declared a three-day mourning as the blast also injured 68 others. The Defense Ministry said the terrorist act was carried out using a vehicle packed with 80 kilograms of explosives, tagging it the worst attack in Bogota in 16 years. In a national address, President Ivan Duque ordered reinforcements to Colombia's borders and routes in and out of cities. He has also requested that priority be given to all the investigation to identify the masterminds of the attack and their accomplices. Right-wing Duque, who assumed power in August, has pelted a tough line against masses, rebels and drug traffickers in the largest cooking producer in the world. And now talking sports. A disappointed Caroline Wozniacki says she is leaving Melbourne Park with her head held high, despite arch-rival Maria Sharapova ending her dream of defending the Australian Open title. Sharapova upset her in a three-set trailer to reach the last 16 at Dane's expense 6-4-4-6-6-3. What number three Wozniacki spent more than a decade chasing her maiden Grand Slam and said it was tough to accept she was now out of the running to retain the trophy. 
And that's it for the Super Screen TV News at 6. Uh, do join us again at 8 for more news and reports. Until then, I am Kiruka Ibe. Enjoy your evening ahead.